Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of the Champions League final. Real Madrid for the 14th time. I mean at this point uh, one could really just randomly give Real Madrid every other year the trophy. Uh, yes, I think uh, in comparison to previous seasons um, I have to say uh, the run that Real Madrid have with the teams they have eliminated I think they went through all the best teams in Europe, more or less, uh, in the knockout stage. And while always you can always say lucky, they had this kind of stamp on them. And you know, if you beat the top three in England plus PSG, I think one can say this is probably a deserved title. I, I would not go as far to call Real Madrid by any means the best team in Europe, but they were probably the most solid, they were the most solid team in Europe. Let's put it that way. I mean, uh, the results that they had, the results they pulled out and also yesterday uh, with Thibaut Courtois standing on his head, what more do you need? And yeah, who needs Mbappé if you have Thibaut Courtois? I honestly think um, the setup and especially and I think this final, although he really wouldn't like it, I think for me it is as much about Angelotti as about the individual, I mean, the individual players outside of Thibaut Courtois. For me, Thibaut Courtois won the final for Real Madrid. Uh, we have to be absolutely uh, clear on that. And I think for me, it's also the first time uh, that I can remember that, nah, if I look at uh, Oliver Kahn, but you know, it has been a while that the, that the goalkeeper has really been standing as the same hockey on his head. I mean, you know, now that the NHL playoffs are going on and tonight is also the uh, World Cup final in hockey between Finland and Canada. There you see it at times that a goalie can stand on his head and single-handedly win a tournament. Uh, I don't want to say that Tupu Kortua single-handedly won the tournament, although he made crucial saves against Manchester City. But yesterday, uh, if there's another goalkeeper in goal, I honestly think that Liverpool will win this final. And this was a Liverpool team that didn't actually look all that sharp all over. Uh, yes, they had um, phases of intense pressure, but it was never sustained and they all looked a little bit slow and tired. This was the other observation. Uh, while well, Liverpool probably did more for the game and was more proactive, uh, Real Madrid were, were defending and um, not even all that great, but you know, they gave it their all on with a defensive structure. And whenever they needed a save from Thibaut Courtois, Thibaut Courtois came up, up with the save. And I'm still not 100% uh, clear why that goal was not given ahead of the first half, but uh, it could have been a 2 0 score for Real Madrid as well. So, yeah, uh, very, very interesting. Now, I think uh, at this moment the big story, of course, is Real Madrid winning. But I think an underreported story uh, still is uh, the delay that we had in the Champions League final. That it was delayed for uh, a whole of 37 minutes uh, because of let's say trouble at the Liverpool end. But this already sounds like yeah, fans. No, the fans, fans were not fighting. I mean, uh, at this point, it's rather unclear to me what happened. I think it was a major, major mess up on the organizational level. That's for sure. Um, because the turnstile's not working, come on, it's a Champions League final. You already had the mess up kind of with the pitch where, um, yeah, you decided to put a new pitch in uh, with way too little time for this to actually proper uh, properly settle. Um, the reports are now different. Uh, different. It seems like there were Liverpool fans that got in the stadium without proper tickets, if if not tick tickets all day. Uh, shut down the gates. I saw the videos with Liverpool fans climbing over the fence, and no one being able to hold them. Just uh, making a dash for the stadium, being in there. That's the one thing. The other thing is that there are people with valid tickets not being able to get in. And then the last thing is that, of course, the French police went with tear gas against the English fans. Ah. It seems like most Liverpool fans were peaceful. Most Liverpool fans were peaceful, uh, if not, all, if not all, all of them running into the ground with fake tickets. Yeah, that's a different story. <sighs> What can come out, can I say? I don't want to say much. I don't know where to where to portion the blame, but I have to say, not having the turnstiles working or shutting this down and having people with proper tickets, this seems to be a major mess up on the organizers' uh, side. And this is something that should not happen.
this should not happen. Uh, but I do remember, I think in 2007 for the champ Champions League final, there were also with the Liverpool fans a little bit of trouble. So um, I don't know where to take it. I think one major problem is that, of course, uh, in English fans are traveling en masse, and especially a, a huge club like Liverpool. And then if they show up with that much uh, force and then you still have like the pictures from uh, not only the... Uh, the old uh, cliches of the hooligans, which don't, I don't think exist anymore, but you have many Liverpool fans in town. So this is a force a show on mass. And then if the French police, who are never, uh, who were also a little bit stricter, showing up like in full riot gear, it's trouble. It's trouble. I, as I said, I really do not know what it is. To me, it seems like an, an absolute organizational chaos. This is what it seems, and uh, you need to demand better from there. Um, so yeah, let's go to the game. Uh, as I said, I mean, it took the game to a little bit get get it going. You could from the beginning see that Real Madrid had trouble getting out of their own half. Liverpool uh, all owning their possession, uh, uh, trying to put pressure onto Real Madrid. However, without really creating chances. I think the first one came then around the 15th minute. And this they, they started a five minute period. I'm sorry. The um, Poland are still out there while I get... Um, Treatment that works now much much better. My nose is itching up a storm at this moment, and I hate it. <laughs> now, in any case, uh, I think it was uh, 50, after 55 minutes there was a first shot of Mohamed Salah that uh, uh, forced um, uh, the Kulkutwa into action. Uh, then Thiago had uh, from the, the long range shot there was not not really really, really trouble. Um, then again, uh, Mohamed Salah had a, you know there was like within five minutes a whole lot lot chances. The best one definitely by Sadio Mane who takes a shot that uh, Courtois deflects onto the post. This was the biggest chance of the first half. Uh, I think then only later Mohamed Salah um, again in, I think it was the 34th, and those were the chances. This was this five minute period. Where I think Liverpool need to score. Uh, it's either the first chance by Salah that they had was a really big one, definitely the one by Mane. Um, that was the one where I really lo uh, look at. If this goes in, Liverpool win that that, uh, that trophy. But uh, at that moment, then Real Madrid, you could really see the resolve coming up in them uh, to fight against it. And then a, a brilliant pass by David Alaba onto Benzema. Who cannot put it in in internet? He gets a little a little bit lost there, but then suddenly I think Valverde wants to take the shot and then it gets blocked and, and then via Thiago it comes to Benzema who puts it in in, in internet and um, you can see clearly in the replay the ball comes from the knee of uh, Fabinho uh, to Benzema. Side position at that point. However, I I'm not very clear. I mean, the way it got explained is. That when Valverde wants to play the ball, uh, all the other contacts are not uh, are kind of like a clearing attempts or saves. So it was not an, uh, a purposeful uh, deflection. However, then I look at um, Mbappé's winning goal in the Nations League final. That also was not on purpose to play him on site there. So I really, I mean... I really don't get this. This, this. this is a rule that needs to be cleared. For me, as I saw, it was three players converging onto the ball. And then the ball just lands uh, at Benzema and it comes from far from the So for me, I really am a little bit flabbergasted. This rule is very, very uh, iffy. From what I hear, by the letter of the law, the refs made the right decision. Of course, they had four of uh, see, var uh, var uh, refs there. Yeah, that, that, that's a doubt of also video season refs there, which yeah uh, makes it a little bit tough. It's it 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 just didn't look right to me. On on honestly, I really thought that, that my gut feeling was that the goal should have stood. Uh, not when it immediately went in, because you know the ref went up with the offside flag. But when I see the replay, to me there was uh, too little there to yeah. But you know whatever, it was nil nil at the half. Second half, uh, the picture didn't change except that Liverpool got slower. That's the one thing. And then uh, one brilliant, uh, and uh, no, not a no, not a brilliant attack, but one uh, relief attack 
by Valverde going, going in. And then he sees Vinny Jr. stealing himself away from Alexander Arnold, who is not aware that Vinny Jr. is behind it. And this was the one thing uh, that clearly had to be said that um, as much as he brings for going, going, going forward, uh, Alexander Arnold always is a little bit un unaware of what is, ha is happening on his back. And so um, Valverde, um, uh, Vinicius Jr. steals himself away. Valverde placed a cross that even, I didn't think was even that great, 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 great cross in many ways uh, through a Liverpool defense. And then it's very easy. And uh, more or more or less with a second shot on goal, Real Madrid score the, what ended up being the winning goal. Um, huge... Uh, uh, credit has to be given to Dani Carvajal, who um, Luis Diaz at the beginning was kind of uh, being a nuisance to Real Madrid, but then he completely shut him down. And then um, in the 65th, he had to come off for Diego Jota. Uh, and then uh, this also started a little bit then the, the, the last phase, but nothing really seemed to work out for Liverpool. I mean, Diego Jota had a good, good chance. Mohamed Salah continued his personal battle uh, with uh, Thibaut Courtois. Um, I think there was one where he uh, closed, closed, closed the goal and wanted to play it back. Pay, uh, then uh, Kur, uh, Courtois saves it. Then there was a pretty good chance by Diogo Jota. Then there was an awful shot by Naby Keita, where I really wonder what are you doing there? And of course, the big one uh, just with a few minutes, minutes ago, where Mohamed Salah pretty clear uh, shot on goal and Courtois gets uh, his upper arm on it and with that save that more or less settled the game it was pretty clear that Liverpool are not going to come back from that one uh, and in fact they didn't even have a really good chance after that, 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 that one you see it how Thibu Kukukotoa uh, made Real Madrid a stronger team because the more saves he made the more um, resolve Real Madrid found and uh, Doug, Doug, Doug and Eda Militao and David Alaba really worked well in defense uh, uh you know blocked stuff away um and you always had the danger uh, that they launch a counter attack and, and uh, i think more or less i mean it didn't amount to amount to much but the most dangerous situation i think was in 90th minute when when suddenly uh real madrid had a, a three and two or something like that so yeah um real madrid win this champions league final and were they the best team in Europe? No. Did they deserve it? Yes. That's how I can summarize it. To me, this is... It may have been the the, the last big dance for Carlo Angelotti. I'm... That's the one thing. Well, I... Honestly, I was leaning in the final a little bit more Liverpool than Real Madrid. But, you know, I wanted to have a good, 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 good final. I... I I think it was an okay final. Uh, it will not go into the history books except for the story of Real Madrid. Uh, when I look at uh, Carlo Ancelotti, who I think is one of the most underrated coaches in Europe, bar none, and as a Milan fan, I will always have him near and dear to my to, to heart. The only downside on him is, yes, that final in 2005 he should not have lost. Um, and also there should have been more league titles for that Milan side, but you know. Aside that, I think he's one of the most underrated coaches out there. Um, he now twice won the Champions League with Real Madrid, twice with Milan. He won it a total of four times. No one has done it more, and he's probably one of the most likable guys in the entire game. Maybe even more so than Jurgen Klopp. Because unlike Jurgen Klopp, he's not a sore loser. I really like Jurgen Klopp. I like his attitude. He is one that uh, is very personable, and I, I really do like him. But Angelotti has a certain uh, class and attitude towards it that uh, Klopp just does not have. It's very much Italian versus German in that regard. So yeah, that's the that's, 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 that's one thing. But um, the one thing that Angelotti does probably best is not only that he is probably he he can always find a good balance within a team he has this he really down and you know he's also not wedded to his ideas if something doesn't work okay let's throw away they lost the classical they should have lost it probably by eight goals but i said okay i messed it up let's retool on to the champions league final we go uh and the other thing is that he's just a player's coach he really makes every player important to work for the team 
And you saw it, especially against Gag, against Gag, against Manchester City, how he involved the more experienced players. What shall we do next? What was, was, he gives them the freedom, but he also gives them the confidence to play for it. This is so great to see what Angelotti can, can do, and I'm so happy that he wins this final. I, I think I'm more happy for Angelotti than anyone else in he, in this squad. Not even David Alaba, because, you know, I, he never really played for teams that I really, really support. So, yeah. In that sense, uh, yes, he's Austrian and he has not more, won more championships than anyone else. But still, really, humongous credit to Ancelotti. And you saw it. Uh, I mean, he was, of course, the first one up to the Pope. Popolio. And the big embrace that he had with uh, Florentino Perez. And I was even thinking that he will, he will say, and you don't dare me fire now, or something like that. I think this is his last coaching uh, stint. After that, I think he will just, he may do a national team or whatever, but I think he's done with club coaching. That much is clear to me. Uh, he has reached a pinnacle. This was the best season that he could. I mean, he was at Everton for crying out loud. And I, I would like, like to know from Everton friends what they thought about uh, seeing Angelotti just a year after he was at Everton. Uh, they go into relegation and he in battle and he wins the Champions League for Real Madrid. I really would like to see their, their, their perspective on it. This coach is just amazing. I have to say, for uh, I really liked at the celebrations uh, two two, uh, two things. Like Florentino Perez even made it a point to hug Gareth Bale, to hug Aiden Hazard, who, who are the absolute disappointments of, of the season. I really, I, ne I normally do not like it, but I really thought that the gesture of letting Marcelo lift the trophy. Yes, as a player, he doesn't have much on-field contribution, but I think... In the dressing room, he is an authority or uh, someone to look up to. And I think you could see this because he was always there on the bench uh, also helping out there. So that he could lift the trophy was already cool. That he just said, okay, this is the last time I do something as a Real Madrid player. Bye. I'm going to take the trophy now for myself. It was so cool to see it. And then at the end, how he wouldn't let, let, let go. I absolutely loved uh, this one. I also loved how... What a routine Real Madrid had in celebrating. If you've seen the previous Celsius celebrations, where you didn't know who, who will get the pot next, and you know, all the wild celebrations, can I have it? Can I have it? They were, okay, Marcelo lifts the cup. You take it now. You get now your moment with, with the cup and right in the spotlight. And the next one, right in the spotlight. Up, it was, there was just such a routine in it. Yeah, you're at Real Madrid. You win it. Uh, that it happened in Paris, uh, the hometown of, of Kylian Mbappé, I think had a, a different dimension to it. I also have, 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 have had to say, um, I really liked when Ian Rush and Raul uh, brought out the trophy. And, but all the soccer promenades, I barely saw any Liverpool uh, a great, great players. It was all Real Madrid in the sense. I mean, Zidane, Ronaldo, I mean, Rafa Nadal, of course, there as well. Uh, you know, all the, uh, Luis Figo, all those great players. And it just shows you, yes, this team will not go in as one of the great Real Madrid teams. There are none of, uh, it doesn't really have a superstar except for Benzema. But, you know, uh, it, but they, just just this culture that Real Madrid have with this competition just sounds, 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 sounds something else. Now, um, the Real Madrid have 14 trophies. The next one is Milan with seven, and then Liverpool and Bayern with six. That's a big dif That's a big difference, and I would argue that of the last uh, four trophies that they've won, maybe only once you would say that they were the best team. But then again, if it comes to the Champions League, it's the birthright, and that's where I want to end it. Would like to hear your thoughts on the Champions final. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Videos like these, we are done with the Champions League season and we have the winner that we all would expect. Or not. Well, on the onset, you would expect Real Madrid. I will talk to you soon. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel and click the little bell icon so that you can update it whenever anything happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.